right. It looks like we are live. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm Dave. I'm always Dave, I guess. Today, I'm Dave with Fragrance Bros. Today, I'm doing a first impression, um, not really a full review, of these. These are the samples, the new Aqua Original line by Creed. So this is a live video. So if you're with me today, you can go ahead and comment. And if you're watching this now, well, you're watching it later. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be talking about this, and if you're live uh, with me and you want to comment, I'm going to do my first impression first, and I will get to comments later after I do the video, uh, but if you want to ask any question, you can go ahead and ask a question. You can either uh, at me, you can put at Fragrance Bros, and it'll go, it'll go to me. If you want to send me a question and I get to it right away, I'll stop what I'm doing if you send me a, um, um, what are they called, super chat. If you send me a super chat, I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll answer your question. Other than that, I will wait and then I'll do the um, questions at the very end. But I managed to fix some of the problems I had last time. So last time I had some B-roll footage and the audio wasn't working, but I got, got it right. So technology, man. So there's a learning curve with everything. So I'm going to show you some of the B-roll footage of the samples. This is the new Aqua Original line. Now Creed actually sent these to me. Um, I was not expecting these. They just showed up at my doorstep. And this is a newly relaunched uh, collection. Three of these, I believe, or two or th two of these are repackaged from previous releases. And three of these are brand new. So the three that are new are Zest Mandarin, Citrus Bigorod, and Green Neroli. And there are two that are kind of repackaged for this line. That is Vetiver Geranium and Iris Tuberose. So we're going to smell all those. I think I have a review of Vetiver Geranium. So I think that was with uh, Cy, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to go watch that, you can go back and watch that. Uh, but yeah, this line looks really cool. I'm glad that they're, um, they just released these just in time for uh, spring, summer <laughs> in, uh, in North America or you know, in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. But I'm going to um, quickly do kind of a, um, a first impression of these. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like these. I usually like really fresh scents. But I'm going to show you kind of the um, the samples they sent. Um, Creed always does a really good job whenever they do their sample sets. And this is no exception. Um, as you can see, it really cool box. And, you know, simple samples. Uh, one of the funny things, though, is you, you can see from, from this, the three new ones are different samples than the two uh, old ones. The two old ones have a different sample look to them. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But uh, yeah, here's just all the samples. If you really want a B-roll of the samples up close. <laughs> uh, but I always think it's cool. So uh, yeah, there's the Iris Tube Rose. And that's the old sample, as you can see. And then uh, Vetiver Geranium, another one that's the old sample. And then the last one, uh, you'll be able to see it's the new sample. So uh, kind of funny. They're just, I guess, actually repackaging, re repackaging these. So yeah, so whatever. Um, let's go to some of the notes real quick, and then um, we will see. Let's see here. Let's go to, where is it? Okay, yeah. All right. We'll go first with Citrus Biggerod, and we'll try that. All right, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that, so yeah. Uh, Citrus Biggerod, apparently it's sold out <laughs> already. Notes in this one are lemon, petty grain, uh, white pepper, lemon, mandarin, uh, petty grain again, uh, Haitian vetiver, ginger, and peppermint. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we got here. Citrus Biggerod, of course I got my, my sample little strips here. Uh, let's see, Citrus Baker Rod. Okay. That's pretty good. To me, this reminds me of kind of like a... Kind of the classical, kind of Italian-style uh, fragrances. And... <laughs> someone says, please cut my fingernails. I need to cut them. They are too long. Uh... So this reminds me kind of of that style of fragrances. Um, that bright kind of citrusy, petty grain type of thing. 
kind of in that hard citrus style. Some people really like that. Rindy. Pretty good. Doesn't blow me away, but it's good. Of course, I don't know how this dries down. Maybe it dries down into something completely different. All right. Next, we will try green neroli. Let's go ahead and get this up real quick. Green neroli. Has notes of red mandarin, not sure what red mandarin is, peppermint pettigrain, Brazilian uh, pintango orange, sweet orange, tarragon, neroli, caraway, rosemary, lemon, and mint. Okay, so this sounds really good. So let's go ahead and see what I think of this one. Okay, green neroli. I'm imagining this is going to be green. Ooh. That one is really, really good. Okay, so yeah, I get mint right away. I get the peppermint. I get almost like um, like a mint tea type of thing. Like if you've had like um, maybe like sleepy time tea, it has almost that type of smell with citruses and stuff on top. I like it a lot. That one is excellent. Green Neroli, wow. That is a good one. That's going to be a contender for sure. All right. Now, Iris Tube Rose is next. That's one of the ones that we, that is apparently already, uh, was already in the line when they, and they relaunched it. Um, someone asked in the comments, they wondered if uh, Vetiver Geranium and um, Iris Tube Rose, since they're relaunched, if they're reformulated. I have no idea. It's been a long time since I've tried Vetiver Geranium, so I'm not really sure. Uh, but let's go to, oops, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's see here. Iris tuberose. Okay, Iris tuberose has notes of galbanum, uh, galbanum uh, green violet leaf, orange, Indian tuberose, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, Sicilian orange blossom, musk, uh, and Mexican vanilla orchid. Okay. So oop. let's go ahead and try that. Iris tuberose. Or tuberose. All right. Okay. It's nice. I don't normally like tuberose. I really actually hate it. So to say that this is nice is an extreme compliment for me. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely tuberos in this but what I kind of actually like about this it goes more down um, the soapy route so there's a little bit more of a kind of a soapier type of edge to it and to me that kind of knocks off kind of like the really weird part of tuberos which, which I don't like this is nice um, They okay so they made this kind of in more of a unisex kind of way. Normally, whenever I smell tuberose, to me it smells almost grandmotherly and very feminine. Um, and to have a masculine tuberose is not very common. This I would not say is necessarily masculine, but I would say that it's it's a, a good... Uh, it's a good fragrance in the soapier realm. That's nice. I think the vanilla actually adds a lot here. Um there's not a lot of vanilla in here. Oh, it's vanilla orchid. Okay, so maybe I'm totally wrong then. Um, but there's a lot here that kind of smooths out the edges of a type of fragrance that I would normally not like. So, um, yeah. So let's go to... Actually, you know, I'm returning to it. I I get the ylang ylang, which I really like. All right, so let's go to... Uh, Vetiver Geranium. So we'll go to Vetiver Geranium real quick. All right. And this is, again, another one that is um, was relaunched. <laughs> this one sold out, too. Okay, whatever. Come on. All right, so notes in this. And if you've tried this before, let me know if these notes are any different. 
So they may have just changed the notes for the copy. Maybe they uh, reformulated it. I don't know. Granny Smith apple. I remember that. Uh, bergamot, lemon, geranium, cinnamon, rose, vetiver, patchouli, cedar, musk, and amber. All right. So let's go ahead and try that real quick. Now, I remember liking this fragrance but not loving it. I remember it being a vetiver fragrance, but it didn't really wow me. But I did like the apple that was in this. So uh, we'll see how this is. Okay. I like it. I get the apple. I get the vetiver. I almost get kind of like this underlying leathery type of note in there in the bottom, which I really like. It kind of reminds me of a, you're going to hate this, because of the apple, because of the leathery type of thing in there, it reminds me a little bit of a different take on Aventus, but I like that a lot. And I could also see this as um, a style of maybe Koenig by Yosh, similar type of feel to it, apple, vetiver, leather, that type of thing. And there's no leather in this, but there's like a leathery feeling in this. I actually like this a lot more than I did anyway. I want to try that again. That's really good. Try that on skin sometime. All right. And last, we will go to uh, Zest Mandarin or Zest Mandarin. <laughs> and uh, here's this one right here. And let's see here. So let's go to Zest Mandarin. 315 dollars for 100 mil i mean that's creed prices i'm imagining this would go down eventually uh let's see notes are lemon orange pettigrain lemon again mandarin tunisian orange blossom uh patchouli flowers and pettigrain sounds pretty good let's go ahead and try it here These new sprayers are a lot better than the old ones, so I like that a lot. The old ones, man, they're a little finicky. Whoa! Now that is bright. Really, really super bright and rindy and fresh. <clears throat> That's good, man. Really excellent. I get a lot of lemon. A lot of lemon. <clears throat> what were some of the other notes in this? Orange? Yeah, I get orange. Mandarin? It's a different type of orange. Some of the other things I don't necessarily get. Maybe a tiny bit of the petty grain. There's almost like a... Um, what is it? It's almost like a metallic type of feel. Almost like a, a cleaner type of feel. Some people don't like that, so that might be a red flag to some people. But it has like this really kind of sharp quality that I really like. Um, so that's really good. So let's try them again here. Citrus Biggerod. Okay. Kind of a lemon cocktail type of thing. Hard lemon Italian type of citrus thing. Green Neroli. Yeah, green neroli has that kind of um, mint tea type of thing. Iris tuberose. <laughs> I'm liking it more. I still don't love it. It's just that tuberose. I wish the tuberose was maybe toned down more. Maybe they couldn't call it iris tuberose if they did. <laughs> Vetiver geranium. Vetiver geranium is really good. I might need to come back to that and change my mind because I didn't love it whenever I first tried it. So I may have given it a bad review. Zest Mandarin. That's a, that's a really good one. I don't think this will blow a lot of people away, though. Zest Mandarin. People may think that's a little bit um, boring. I also think that some of these fragrances won't last a long time. That's just a guess, just based on the notes. I haven't tried them on skin to make sure, but Zest Mandarin especially... It feels like it's weighted more on the on the top note side. Oh, there's a nice there's a nice rose in that. Hmm. That's really good. So, those are kind of my overall first impressions of the line. 
for the Creed Aqua Original. Uh, so far, I think these are really good. I think that the additions that they added here, while not really blowing me away, are really good. Iris Tuberose and Vetiver Geranium are the two returning ones, and I think they're still really, really good. And the ones that were uh, that were released, I think, are a good addition as well. Zest Mandarin and Green Neroli, to me, are um, the better of the of the three new ones. Citrus Biggerod, I've just smelled a hundred times before, and so that doesn't really um, amaze me. But let's go ahead and get to some of the questions. Thank you for being patient, and let's answer some of the questions here. Everyone is saying hello. DFW say, Shade says, what? Live? Nice. Yep. <laughs> Rich Mitch says, new creeds? Yep. You smells good. What's up, Eugene? I saw you earlier. I almost responded. <laughs> he says, I love your eyebrows. You know what's so funny? I was just thinking about that the other day. Uh, I was thinking about you and your comment about eyebrows. Probably because uh, my eyebrows were looking pretty bushy. <laughs> uh, they probably still do. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see here. What's that? Lefteris Photopolis. If that's not a Greek name, I don't know what is. It says, Vetiver Geranium is great. I wonder if it's reformulated. That's the question. We don't know. But it's still really good. Now, as I recall, it smells similar to what I remember it being. Vetiver Geranium still is probably one of the best of this line. That's excellent. And that's one fragrance that I think is probably going to be the heaviest of the bunch because of those uh, because of those notes it feels a little heavier than the other ones do a uh, zest mandarin is, is like the lightest it feels like it's going to go away in a flash while vetiver geranium feels like it's the heaviest of the five i don't know if it's been reformulated that's a good question um not really sure true dat says please cut your fingernails i will <laughs> people are saying hello lucas skywalker <laughs> says new line yep people are saying hello Al Green says, man, it says, man, oh man, are you losing weight? You're, man, oh man, you are losing weight in every video. Are you okay? I'm actually not losing weight in every video. I lost uh, some weight a while back. I'm at my normal range now. Um, I was telling people earlier in a previous live video, I did, um, I was at my heaviest a couple of years ago and um, had some health problems, some minor health problems, thank God. Um, and because of that, I was uh, gaining weight because of diet decisions and um, other things, um, not exercising as much probably. And I was at my heaviest a few years ago. And you can actually go back and look at some of my videos um, a few years ago and see some of the, the weight fluctuations. Like at the start of the series on um, Fragrance Basics, which is one of my favorite playlists. You can go there and you know check it out. At the start of that... I remember being um, on the thin side. I think towards the end of it, um, or I, you can see kind of, uh, I don't remember when the timeline was. Towards some time in there, you can see I was gaining weight um, at some point. And then um, a couple of years ago, after, this is about a year after I had those health problems, um, I had to double down and, and um, um, I went, I looked in the mirror and I was like, man, I was look, I looked heavier than I've ever been. And I wasn't overweight. I was definitely in the average range, you know, thank God. But, um, I, I just wanted to lose weight. And so I changed diet and I changed some things and, uh, lost my weight. So now I'm at my more average lower side of the weight. The thing with this camera though, is that this lens is a wide angle lens. It's actually an ultra wide angle lens. So right now I'm on like 24, um, I think it's like 24 millimeters. I'm literally... Like here is the camera and here is me. So I'm literally 17 inches away from the camera. So I can like I can't even stretch out my hand. So because of that, it actually stretches out the background because of the um, the field of view. So it makes things this way look longer, which makes things this way look kind of uh, thinner. So I think that it's probably just an optical illusion. Um, but I am on the thinner side. But I haven't lost any more weight than... And what's funny is, since the cold weather started, I haven't been able to get out and go exercise at night like I normally do. So I've gained a couple of pounds, but it's, you know, slowly. But it's not anything um, like it was. I was at my thinnest recently um, around um, November. 
So that has nothing to do with fragrances. <laughs> Ryan Huerta says he needs a couple of biscuits. <laughs> Send super chats for biscuits. <laughs> Put in the biscuit fund. Biscuits either, uh, we'll do either American biscuits, which are, you know, the thick doughy things, or we'll do the British biscuits, which are more like cookies. I'm, I'm for each, either one of those. Rich Mitch says, Aberdeen Lam Lavender is my favorite from the line. You know, that's one I haven't tried. And that's another one that is kind of one of those unknown creeds. Really strange. Um, um, I, I've heard some people really like that. I personally don't like lavender, so I haven't really tried it. But um, um, I, I've been wanting to try that one because it is one of those kind of underrated, unknown creeds. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to trying that someday. Uh, Lefteris Photopolis says, Galbatum, my new favorite note. You know, that's a note that I'm not super familiar with. I know it kind of adds kind of a greenness to it, but I don't know exactly what it smells like. I'm going to have to get some... Um, some ingredient samples and see what it smells like. It'll probably be very familiar. Sometimes I'm actually really surprised by how ingredients smell. Like when I did the review for, uh, let's see, was it Molecule 05? That one was Kashmirin. Kashmirin smells nothing like I was expecting it to. All the descriptions of Kashmirin always describe it as like a suede-like um, type of feeling or something that you get. And whenever I smelled it, to me it smelled like, like rindy watermelons. It like smells nothing like what people describe it as, especially well at least, um, perfumers or whoever makes those note things. It smells nothing like that. And whenever I smelled fragrances with cashmere in, I don't, I still don't get it. There's only some fragrances I smell that I smell that note in there, and and I do like that a lot. But galbanum is one of those notes I'm sure that I've smelled a hundred million times. And, um, but I need to, I need to try it out. Adib, uh, Takedan, I'm probably not, I'm probably not mis, uh, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. It says, hello from Singapore. Hello. I've heard that's like the most beautiful country. I need to go there someday. Al Green says, what if I tell you that the website's breakdown notes are a uh, reference, not the accurate pyramid co composition? Well, I know that. But I don't know the accurate. Here's the thing. The pyramids, of course, they're not accurate because they're perfum perfumers are using a mixture of synthetic things and um, natural things. No one's going to put in a perfume outline or pyramid. This is filled with cologne, isoe super and, you know, uh, ambroxan or whatever. P people aren't going to say that. And that doesn't sell. That, that doesn't describe what the fragrance smells like even though it actually contains those materials or whatever. The pyramid is supposed to tell you what it's supposed to smell like. And it's supposed to be a representation of what it smells like. I know it's not accurate in the literal sense. It's accurate in the um, in a representational type of sense. Whenever you smell zest mandarin, I get mandarin. I get the rose that they're talking about. I get some other things. Better Vergeranium. I get all the notes they're talking about. I know it's not accurate, but it's right. Trudat says, what would you compare green neroli to? Um, I, you know, I don't think there's a fragrance that I've smelled that is very similar to that. At least I haven't tried one. The closest thing I can think of is like a mint tea type of thing. It, is minty with that peppermint. Um, uh, there's other notes in there. I forgot what, what the note list is, but but there is like a tea type quality and definite strong mint, as well as some citrus notes on top. That's really good. The mint in here is really nice and thick and sweet. And though I haven't tried it on skin, I would say that this might be one of the best representations of mint. It's really excellent. Milad Sky says, I'm done with Creed. Nothing worth buying since 2011. I understand. Every company goes through those type of phases. I had a, a recent video where I talked about house letdowns, Creed being one of them. 
And you know, I, I still think that, but I'm always optimistic about certain houses. And Creed is one of those houses that even though they've let me down many times, I'm still optimistic about the house because I know that they're capable of doing great things with their fragrances. And I think this is a decent, um, I, I think this is a decent line. It doesn't really blow me away, but I think this is very decent. I think some of these would be excellent. I want to try these on skin. I want to do kind of reviews of maybe some of these later down the road, so we'll see. But uh, <clears throat> so far, um, I am optimistic about Creed and optimistic about this line. Even though they let me down. <laughs> Uh, the juice says, does that camera trick work with D pick too? <laughs> well, I wouldn't know from experience, but I'm sure that it would. So if you need help, use a really wide angle lens. <laughs> Ryan Huerta says Popeyes. That's right. They make excellent biscuits, man. But I mean, you have to really like butter because butter is what it tastes like. <laughs> oh yeah. Mug of the day, of course, right here. You can go find it down below if you want to buy the best mug on the planet. Lefteris Photopolis says, Royal Oud or Green Irish Tweed? If you had to choose one to wear. That's tough. It's tough because they're both completely different and I use them for different occasions and different seasons. Um, personally, I think Green Irish Tweed is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. So Green Irish Tweed would be my choice. However, Green Irish Tweed smells similar to uh, Cool Water. And like um, Chris from Fragmental was saying, he doesn't love Green Irish Tweed because it reminds him so much of Cool Water. To me... I think it's like a, a really elevated version of Cool Water, so that's why I really love it, and that's why I prefer it. To me, I can wear, that, wear it constantly. But Royal Oud, probably my second favorite from Creed, and it's excellent. And it's not too oudy. You can definitely smell the oud in the background, but I get like just this really rich, almost pipe tobacco type of smell from it, and I think it's excellent. Uh, Royal Oud is amazing, especially for uh, formal events or weddings, uh, winter, cool days. Anytime you want to dress up, it just rocks, rocks. So personally, I would say get both. But if you want just one, um, I think Green Irish Tweed is probably my absolute favorite. Tom Barson says, tried Royal Oud recently, expected more. You know, I understand the hard thing with trying a fragrance that you hear about on YouTube is that so many people uh, hype it up, especially like um, Aventus or Royal Oud or Green Irish Tweed. So many people hype up those type of fragrances constantly. Back in the day, it was original Santal. I don't think it gets as much love as it does now, um, or as it did then. But so many people hype up those fragrances, and you hear it, and whenever you first, whenever you actually try it, you're like, I mean, it smells good and all, but it doesn't smell like what they're saying and that's that's always that's always the case and I totally completely understand what you mean um, but I think Royal Oud is completely worth the hype I absolutely love it but it's everyone you know I always encourage people especially don't blind buy uh, a fragrance go out there and try it and take someone's review as a guide just an opinion and um, if someone is hyping something up try it but uh, you might, you might not, you might like it, you might not. Just depends. Milad Sky says Erwin Queen, uh, Erwin Creed, is not as talented, uh, is not talented like his father. Woo! That is a spicy opinion. I need to put that in a new spicy opinions video. <laughs> um, I know what you mean. I think that um, some of the fragrances by Erwin Creed, Creed have not been as good as. Um, his dad uh, was it Olivier Creed um, I think you're right but 
I think it might also be a little unfair just because Erwin Creed has certain has more restrictions because of the current climate and current condition of fragrances in the world than maybe his dad did. He also has to live up to he he also has like a huge um huge shoes to fill. So he has a lot of expectation put on his shoulders and maybe unrightfully so. Um, I think that if Olivier Creed didn't make what he made, Erwin Creed's fragrances would not be compared so critically. And I think that Erwin Creed's fragrances are still really good, but I think that he just has a different taste than maybe his father did. So on one hand, I see what you mean. I think that his fragrances are very different from Olivier Creed's, but I also think that it could be a few different things, you know? So I think that um, it's difficult to compare them both when they're, you know, it's almost like two different companies in a lot of ways. DFW Shade says, Biscuits, Cracker Barrel. You know... Here's an unpopular opinion. I don't like their biscuits. <laughs> Here's another unpopular opinion. I don't really even like Cracker Barrel. I think that the Cracker Barrel is not that great. I think they're just average at best. I don't even like going in there, honestly. <laughs> uh, Robert Quinlan says, For me, Creed is pleasant but passable. Uh, they're all just fine for me, but I'm glad so many have found things they love from the brand. I know what you mean. Um, Creed has a lot of fragrances in their line. And there are probably more passable and maybe even misses from the brand than there are hits. I think probably just because they've made so many. I'm not really sure. I don't know. I guess this goes into kind of why the brand has disappointed me in the past, but also to the question of, Erwin Creed and his direction being a, kind of a different direction. Um, I know what you mean. Um, it's funny, like, a lot of the fragrances before Olivier Creed I don't think were that great either. So I think that maybe Olivier Creed had that kind of golden era of uh, fragrances for Creed. That might have made them what's, that might have made them uh, as popular as they are today. Ryan Huerta says, um, I don't know, hype aside, Viking was a good fragrance. I did not like Viking. I thought Viking was not good at all. Um, of course, I have a whole review of that, but yeah. Oof. Yikes. Not a big fan of Viking. Especially, I, again, especially compared to Aventus, which it's supposed to be kind of... Um, almost like a sequel to Aventus, a different fragrance, but in a similar family. You can see the connection in the artwork and different things. Um, I did not like Viking at all. Ryan Huerta says, blame uh, Ifra. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people blame Ifra. I don't know necessarily if that's really what who are to blame. I, you don't really know. Let's see, Tom Barson says, uh, Silver Mountain Water, Bois de Portugal, and Royal Mayfair are the best creeds. The rest uh, are meh. Those are excellent, excellent, excellent fragrances. I haven't worn Bois de Portugal, but I got to try it, and I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really great. I need to go actually wear it and see if my opinion has changed um, and what I actually think about it. Silver Mo Mountain Water is one of the best. Another one that is not as talked about today as it used to be, but it's amazing. I love how interesting it is and a lot of copycats of Silver Mountain Water. It's still really great. Royal Mayfair to me was another one that is one of their absolute best. Incredible scent. Um, it's a shame that it got vaulted and uh, was like, whatever. what is it? Their exclusive range or uh, I don't remember what they called it. It was vaulted for a long time and then re-released as... Um... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Windsor. Windsor was my absolute favorite from them. 
and then repackaged. It was vaulted for a while, brought out for a while, sold at like ridiculous prices by Creed, and then remade as Royal Mayfair. Royal Mayfair, I still think, is excellent. I don't think it's quite as good as Windsor was, even though it's supposed to be the same thing. It's not. But I do think that it is excellent, excellent. A Lefteris Photopolis says, Royal Water is underrated. Top three for me. Yeah, absolutely. Another one, underrated fragrance uh, by Creed. Not one of my favorites. Um, I think it has more of a kind of um, mass appeal type of scent. And I think that's really good. Um, <laughs> if you can say, <laughs> like all Creeds are mass appealing, right? But to me, I think that has even more of a uh, mass appeal type of appeal. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that one is another one that is really excellent. Up there with like Himalaya and um, Erolfa for like uh, underrated scents. <laughs> Milad Sky says, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't be ba I wouldn't be surprised if they made an Ambroxan-based perfume. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if they actually do now. Um, that doesn't really surprise me. And it, to be honest, it doesn't upset me either. Every fragrance house has their mythology. You know, they have a certain type of brand that they want to communicate. I'm thinking of, and, and you know, with Creed, their mythology is that they are this really exclusive brand to movie stars and um, royals and uh, politicians and the elites. You know, it's like that type of world. And so they put the best quality ingredients in there. This is their whole mythology. In actuality, it might not be that way at all. It might be completely different. It might be run more like a traditional house. But I don't think that the mythology needs to be taken at face value, literally. I think that people need to understand that the mythology of the brand, the branding, is just their way of communicating what the brand is about. Much like other brands, like uh, Imaginary Authors. Imaginary Authors has their mythology. The mythology of uh, each fragrance being a book that is uh, not real. It's imaginary and made by an author who is also imaginary. They're more upfront about their mythology being imaginary, but when you communicate that type of feeling to your uh, customers, they get it. I think that with Creed, the only thing that people don't get is that their mythology of their branding, uh, they're, they're pushing as uh, real and I don't necessarily think that it's literal. I think that what they're communicating is a type of um, elite feeling for their fragrances. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's literal and real, if that makes any sense. So all that to say, I think that they they may even put Ambroxan in their, Ambroxan in their fragrances now. That wouldn't surprise me, but it also wouldn't bother me either. Just because... I take Creed for what it makes, um, a good fragrance. If it smells good, no matter what the ingredients are, then I don't care what they say. I don't care what their mythology or branding is. So um, if they have Ambroxan in there, it wouldn't bother me. If they made like just a pure Ambroxan fragrance, like Molecule, you know, Molecule, what is it, O2 or O3? And uh, did that with maybe just a tiny bit of citrus on there. <laughs> I don't know. We have to see. But uh, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me in one sense. Uh, you're right. It wouldn't surprise me like it doesn't surprise you. Um, but yeah, you know. DFW Shade says, Royal Mayfair reminds me of bug spray. <laughs> is that a good thing? You know what's funny is certain bug sprays I find really appealing in their scent. I don't know why. Like the smell of Raid Roach Spray, I kind of like um, in a really weird way. There are some things that are supposed to be repulsive but I like them. I think everyone is that way, but that's just one of those things. Whenever someone says something smells like bug spray, I'm like, I need to try that. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily remind me of bug spray though. Um, I do really like Royal Mayfair though. Time to musk up says, Hey, fragrance bros. Hey, time to musk up says, I really enjoy Erolfa. Yeah. Erolfa is a good fragrance. To me, Arolfa is like that B tier or C tier of fragrances for Creed. It's good, but it doesn't really blow me away. But I still think that it's really good. It's one of those fragrances that um, I, I would suggest everyone try from Creed. It's um, a really interesting fragrance, and it's really good. 
Tim uh, Nijman says, hello from the Netherlands. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Hello from Alabama in the USA. Page of Styles says, Zest Mandarin Pomplamousse was my first uh, was my first favorite Creed fragrance that drew me to their line. Interesting. So I wonder, is that different than Zest Mandarin now? I haven't heard of Zest Mandarin Pomplamousse. I haven't tried everything from Creed, to be honest. There's so many. This one is Zest Mandarin. Now they said that this Zest Mandarin is a new fragrance. So I don't know if the name, if there's a um, um, misnomer here with the name. I don't know if you got the name wrong or, or what. But uh, the this Zest Mandarin is excellent. I like that a lot. Also get, is there geranium in this? It reminds me, it had a little bit of a geranium type of scent. DFW Shade says, uh, that Raid Potpourri scent. Ah, <laughs> yeah, right. As a kid, um, we lived, okay, so in our area, in the Mobile, the greater Mobile, Alabama area, um, as a kid, I lived in an area that was outside the city limits. It wasn't rural, but it was suburban, and it was it was just outside. So it was it was in a heavily wooded area, and um, my mom, uh, she got this house. She still lives there. She got this house when I was about in fourth grade. And I remember she must have gotten a really good deal on it because it needed work. And I remember when we when we got in there, we ha- they had problems with roaches. You know, we had problems with roaches for a while. And, you know, so we got used to Raid. And one of the funniest memories that uh, I remember as a kid was the house being completely empty before we moved in and getting one of those bug bombs, uh, like the bug spray things that you put in the middle of a room and just, it just fumes out this huge puff of poison (laughs) that just fills the house and kills bugs. And I remember we had to, we put it in there and then, you know, turned it on and it started to fume up and we had to like, we had to like dash out of the house and, um, Whenever we, uh, whenever we um, came back, there's all these dead bugs and everywhere. It was wild, and some people don't. I, I, I guess some people don't really. Um, they don't really know, you know. Now in my house here, I don't have a ton of trees here, so roaches are not really a problem. And um, I, I can think of only a couple of times when we've seen you know, roaches here in, in my house. So anyway, so I've never had to, I rarely have to use raid. Tiny Musk up says a lot of the men's top smeller, uh, sellers, maybe smellers too. A lot of the men's top s- uh, sellers smell like dishwashing detergent nowadays. Guess that's a little better than raid bug spray. <laughs> yeah, that's a little better. I totally get what you mean though. Whatever they're using, there is a, that type of smell in a lot of fragrances. Page of Style says it's not new. Uh, they, just re- uh, they just released it from their vaulted fragrances. Interesting. Okay. So I'd like to smell that and see what it's like. I'm sure it's like $1,000. <laughs> Tom Barson says your top three niche brands given to us. I don't know. When it, people always ask, you, ask me like what are my top you know, they asked me like top numbers of things on these live things. And I have to think about those. Those aren't something that I can just come up with off the top of my head because the first suggestion, the, the first thoughts that I think of are maybe brands that I like, but may, they might not be my top. I mean, like one of them is imaginary authors. I would say that that's probably in the top three, um, but I don't know. I have to go back and look, see what maybe my top, uh, top three niche brands are there's so many great niche brands or I would say boutique brands. I wouldn't even call them niche because I think that's a poor term, but there's so many great boutique fragrance brands out there. Ryan Huerta says, yeah, that was one with a, a gray cap. Those were still selling a year ago when I last saw it. Pamplemousse. Interesting. Interesting. Brenda Lyon. Hey, Brenda says, Hey, Daver. Hey, 
<laughs> Thanks for joining us. Page of Styles says they re-released Zest Mandarin Pomplamousse from their Vault of Fragrances and put it in the Aqua Original line. Interesting. Because they did not say that in the copy. The copy says that their, free, their three new fragrances, Zest Mandarin being one of them, as the new fragrances, as the new fragrance. Citrus Bigarod and Green Neroli, all new fragrances. The two that they were repackaged, they said. This is coming directly from Creed. The two that were repackaged. Oh, cool. Look at that. That's neat. The two that were repackaged were Vetiver Geranium and Iris Tuberose. Or Tuberose. So I'd really like to smell that one and see how it is. It must be completely different then. If it's, even if, even if it shares a name, I've got to assume that it's completely different. Void Walker says, what's a good alternative to Royal Oud, Dave? Honestly, I don't know. I, I can't think of a fragrance that is like Royal Oud at all, other than maybe just a clone, and I, I wouldn't recommend that at all. Um, I don't know. I would say... Man, that is tough. Royal Oud is so good. It's so good for, for many different reasons. It's just got a nice, like, just really rich, masculine punch to it. I love it. It's It's, it's got a nice, uh, beefy, musky type of smell. That, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Like a beefy, musky. <laughs> you do not want to smell like beef. But um, it has, like, this really nice, uh, musky type of smell to it. Almost like a pipe tobacco type of smell on top of it. There's a tiny bit of oud in there. Um, that really adds a lot. It lasts forever on me. I really don't know what a good alternative to that would be. I'm going to have to think of that. Be a good Killers in the Killers series. All right, let's see here. Time to Musk Up says, Creed needs to do what Tom Ford is doing with the signature line and drop some prices so they're going in the right direction. I think that's interesting. And last week, I was, t- I was talking to Chris from Fragmental and we were talking about this. And how we both think it's really interesting that Tom Ford is doing that. And I think it's great that Tom Ford is doing that. I think especially, so Tom Ford's signature line, I think normally is better than the private blend line on so many different levels. But price definitely being one of them. The fact that they're adding more fragrances to their signature line that were from their private blend, I think is great. And I think is uh, really interesting. But what I really like about this whole thing is you know, I should say we were speculating maybe it has to do with some type of reformulation. If they were to reformulate one of the popular sellers like Tuscan leather, but package it in ombre leather and reduce the price because of a reformulation, there would be no outcry. There would be the opposite. It would be praised that the brand is doing something that is reducing the price. So I think that's really interesting that they're doing that because I don't think that they're doing it necessarily to be uh, generous. Uh, I think it's for, you know, uh, win-win situations. So I wonder why they're doing that. But I think it would be great if Creed would do that too. Um, I just don't know if they ever would. I doubt that they would because, like I said before, part of Creed's mythology is that elite status perfume that's what they want they want the fragrance that is the luxury end the luxury line for those type of uh, clients um so i don't think they ever would i don't think they would drop their prices for a second and i don't think they need to i think they have all of the uh, the press they need i think they have all of the uh, influence they need they have they have their clientele they have their customer base they don't need to drop prices um so that that brings us to why Tom Ford did it. I have no idea. <laughs> but it is really interesting that they did. And I don't mind that. I don't think that Tom Ford is necessarily going after that elite luxury type of audience that Creed is. I think Tom Ford is going after a different type of client that shops at Neiman Marcus or uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. They have extra money to burn, but they're not elite. So I think that's kind of their type of client that they're going after. All right, uh, let's see. Left Aris Photopolis says, Void, okay, he's talking to Void Walker. Uh, Tom Barson says, ah, yes, I remember the video uh, about calling Niche Boutique. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the amazing video. 
Tiny Musk up says, my problem with uh, Creed is in France, they cost 220, I guess, euros for 100 mil. But in America, the dist distributors are forcing the price up to $550 for 100 mil. That's insane. Yeah, I don't know. I have no comment about pricing or whatever. You know, I'm not sure. You can get Creed's on aftermarket resellers all day long for at least 50% off. So I have no problem just telling people just to buy it from resellers. Brenda Lyon says, uh, you know, I've got, I've got to ask if any of these lean feminine joined a little late. Not sure if I missed it. Sorry. No worries. Um, I didn't actually mention that. So let me smell these real quick. Citrus Biggerod, maybe. Green Rolly, maybe. So Iris Tuberose, I would say probably does. Um, I would say, okay, all of these are more in the unisex range. I don't think that any of these are necessarily feminine to my nose. They don't necessarily smell um, like something you would smell on a lady. They don't smell necessarily sexy or that type of thing. These are all kind of neutral unisex type of things. Citrusy, light, uh, green, that type of thing. Um, of the ones that are here, I think Iris Tuberose, probably the most feminine, just because of that Tuberose reminds me more of a lady. <laughs> it always reminds me more of a feminine type of scent. Green Neroli, I think, would also be okay. And I think Zest Mandarin would be cool too, because it's really um, citrusy and bright. But uh, none of them are overtly feminine, in my opinion, anyway. Oh, Tanya Musk got clarified, 220 USD. Wow, okay. So they're literally twice as much here, over twice as much here as they are in France. Wow. I should just buy them in France then. <laughs> the Sentient Man says, Hey, Dave, or just joined. Is Vetiver Geranium still good? Presuming you liked it when it first came out. I do think so. Um, so I remember reviewing Vetiver Geranium and giving it kind of moderate marks liking it but not loving it and i still think that's probably the case with me um and it reminds me of what it did smell like um of course i don't have the original vetiver geranium to compare it to so i'm not really sure but vetiver geranium is still really good and if memory serves then it smells like it did then so i get apple and vetiver and it's kind of a leathery type of uh, thing really good so i think that's really excellent <laughs> Brenda says, thanks, Avery. You're welcome. All right. I think that answered all the questions. And unless other people have other questions to ask, I may have to end this live stream. I'll give everybody a second, I guess. But to kind of sum up, I guess I'll go over real quick these again. Citrus Biggerod. A good kind of Italian style citrus fragrance that I think is pretty good. But it's nothing that blows me away. I've tried this, you know, a million times. Green Neroli, very green, very minty. And like I was saying, it has kind of a, um, a peppermint tea, mint tea type of feeling to it that I like. So that one is really good. And that's one of the newer ones. Iris Tuberose. is definitely tuberose and I hate tuberose, <laughs> but they soften it a lot by other things. And it has a kind of, um, soapy quality that I actually really like here. And for a, for an ingredient that I normally hate, this is something that I think is actually tolerable. And that's a big compliment. <laughs> Vetiver geranium is one of their other ones that they're relaunching again. And I think is one of the best in the line. That one is excellent. Excellent fragrance right there. And that one to me has the most masculine appeal, I would say, and seems the strongest. And uh, last is Zest Mandarin. Zest Mandarin, really zesty, really rindy, almost metallic. And I get almost like a geranium type of thing. I forgot if that's in the notes or not. Um, on the lighter side, it feels like it's weighted more heavily on the top notes. So it feels like it will be the least longest, uh, the least, has the least 
performance, I would say. That of Adranium seems the heaviest and the most masculine. Iris Tuberose seems like the most feminine to my nose. And um, so, yeah. And Green Rolly, to me, is one of the more interesting ones. I think that's really excellent. So, yeah. Page of Style says, what's your favorite from the uh, from the Aqua Original line? So, tough question. I, I would say that it's probably still Vetiver Geranium. I like that one a lot. This is one that I would wear a lot. Um, but I want to try Green Neroli on skin and see how that is because I think that's the most interesting of the bunch. And that one has an, an amazing mint note. Really, really incredible. So, I like that one a lot. Tom Barson says, your next fragrance purchase is what is on the list. So I'm not really sure. Um, I have lots of fragrances that I am, that are on the way and some that I'm looking forward to. I have some fragrances that I'm getting from Frappan. Um, I'm getting Luministe and I, I should say, I believe these are coming. <laughs> Luministe, uh, Speak Easy, and Isle of Man. So we'll see how that is. Um, those I'm actually really looking forward to. There's other fragrances that I really want. So Acro, I don't know if I've talked about it much. So I got a sample set. If you follow me on Instagram, I know some of you do. <laughs> so I got a sample set from Acro recently and I was blown away by Acro. Incredible. So Olivier Cresp makes this line. He's a perfumer for this line. Really amazing line. So well done. And I love Olivier Cresp. I think he's a genius, one of my favorite perfumers. And this Acro line is absolutely fantastic. Tried the line, liked almost every single one of them. They're all fantastic. One that I really like, I think was Smoke. I think that's what it's called. They're all like one word explanations. Smoke, I think, I think that's the name. And Smoke is very much a smoky type of scent. It reminds me of really well done unlit cigars. So I do like the occasional cigar. So uh, cig so it has a, an, a really, really impressive cigar type of smell. I love it. And some other ones on there are fantastic. There's one called Haze. It has kind of a cannabis type of smell. There's another one called Night, which it made me blush when I first smelled it. I'll just say that. Um, but yeah, it, Night was amazing too. That's really accurate, surprisingly. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Tom Barson says, nice, Luministe is nice, but no longevity, unfortunately. You know, I don't really care. Some people really are upset when something doesn't have longevity, longevity but I personally am not the type of person that really cares that, that much. I understand why other people do, but I think there's always a place for a fragrance that doesn't last 12 hours. And usually whenever I want to wear a fragrance, there's not many places where I have to be that I need a fragrance to last 15 hours. You know what I'm saying? Usually if I'm going somewhere, I need a fragrance to last typically maybe four hours and that's it. Um, unless I'm at work, which if I'm at work, you know, I'm, I work here at home, but if I were to work at an office setting or something, then you can get a fragrance that lasts longer. But um, I personally am not the type of person that really cares that much about longevity. So whenever I hear people say that Luministe uh, doesn't have longevity, I'm like, ah, they say it's nice, but it doesn't have longevity. I'm like, okay, it's nice then. <laughs> Tom Barson says, smoke is my favorite from Acro. Yeah, smoke is great. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, with that being said, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you coming on this live stream with me. Um, let me know what you think of the new Creed Aqua Original line. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, if you're just watching this and you didn't join in on the live stream, uh, let me know. Let me know what your favorites are. Thank you again for watching. Thank you, thank you everyone for submitting your questions and for watching in the live stream. I'll talk to you